Okay, so I thought I would just kind of walk through and narrate some of the things on my uh, my Sonics firewall forward. Uh, I've had questions here and there. So I'll just kind of go through and spend a few minutes just pointing out some of the things that I did, uh, maybe some of the decisions I made. So starting over here, I guess I'll start with the electrical system. So you can see the battery box that I built. Rather than build a full-on box, what I did is I built kind of an open box. You can see on the bottom, um, it's really just kind of two crisscrossing straps. Um, and that way there's good ventilation, the battery doesn't accumulate any debris, it still holds it securely. And then I've got piano hinge on three sides that hold the box in place. And then a, a you know a hatch very similar to what is shown on the uh, on the plans, except that this thing doesn't attach and hinge, it's just the top strap. So I support it again on the boy side. And these are quick disconnect pins with these locking pieces. Um, that way they can be removed easily, but uh, it holds it securely. And when I bend these, I put just a slight bow in the hinge and um, that binds up in the hinge loops. And that way the pin won't slide out easily. You gotta force it. It's just a very slight bow, but it just serves to, to make sure that it stays put. Um, it doesn't rattle or, or twist or any of that. And then right here, I've got the Jabiru regulator and the starter solenoid. And uh, I just made a little strap and I mounted those directly to it. For one thing, this is typically unused real estate. There's, um, there's nothing unusually on the box. I have good access to the backside where I can get a wrench in there. They get plenty of cooling air. They're still well grounded. And uh, I make use of that space that otherwise wouldn't be available. The Jabiru has a, uh, the, the regulator has a plug in it. And so I retain the plug and just wire everything in. So if I need to change that regulator, the, the plug is already done. I can just uh, remove this, pop the old regulator out, bolt up a new one. And uh, very quick order, I've got a new regulator on and ready to go. The connections are all are all standard right as they come on the regulator themselves. Up here, I've got the battery contactor, the master contactor. Very short line going back to the battery. Here is my large capacitor. And this just filters the output that comes out of the, uh, uh, comes out of the regulator dumps it into the capacitor, smooths out any kind of spikes or power pulses, and a good fat ground wire. It's kind of hard to see back here, but back in there is the, uh, the fuse blocks that I use. I've got two fuse blocks. One fuse block is my avionics one, and that's connected to my avionics switch. The other one is my, is my general bus and that's connected on just the master. And then here I've got my uh, forest of tabs for grounding and all my ground points right there. There's a matching one on the inside of the cowling. Coming around the bottom side, you can see the air filter. I use a K and N air filter and it just kind of nests up there between the tubes. It actually works out real well. And then the aero injector. I'll talk about the fuel system here in a minute. Uh, you can see the uh, the breather vent coming down. I've got three breather lines. I've got the oil breather, I've got the fuel tank vent, and then I've got the smoke oil tank. I've got a breather vent on it. So I've got two skinny lines and one fatter line. The smoke system pump right there. So we've got the Aero V system, um, Aero conversion system. So this, this pump, uh, filter, coming in from the smoke tank around here. And then uh, there's a solenoid with the T fitting. Each T goes to each exhaust pipe. So you can see I'm using a header wrap on my exhaust. Jabiru uses this uh, three individual pipes and then there's a, uh, a collector pipe. This piece right here is the, the collector. That doesn't fit real well. So you get quite a bit of exhaust leaking around it. I don't really know what the solution is, but I put an extra wrap of header wrap 
just to try to keep that down and that seems to be helping. You can see that it started out blue and uh, with heat it burns off the dye and discolors. So in the future uh, I don't think buying colored wrap does any good. I think it just looks kind of ratty, uh, half discolored, half not. I would go with just the standard uh, kind of beige wrap. My EGT probes and I just kind of bundle them and run them into my wiring loom back here. The C CHT wires, same thing, bundle them and run them down into the loom. Um, these braided sheets tend to abrade with a zip tie directly on them. Uh, so to provide a little bit of protection, I use the uh, rescue tape or, or self-fusing tape. You can get it from hardware stores or you can get a uh, Harbor Freight sells like an off-brand that works pretty good too. And just, uh, you know, use that to, to isolate and protect those lines where they where they come together. And then you can get a zip tie on to hold them all nice and firm without chafing into that outer braid, which will eventually cause problems and your probe will fail. Coming around to the top, we talk about the uh, the breather. So the Jabiru breather comes out of the uh, the dipstick fill. Has a, a nipple here, and the standard Sonics method is to take a half inch tube, use a short piece of rubber coupling, and then run that. And it kind of loops up towards the top and then back down and out. And at the top, you put a, a whistle hole in it, and then anything kind of condenses in the tube and runs back in. And that works fine, except that a lot of the vapor just bypasses this little loop here and just goes right on out and comes out as an oily mist on the belly. So I had quite a bit of oil on the belly. And it's worse if you overfill the sump, it'll blow all that oil right out. Um, if you do aerobatics and you have any kind of negative G, it'll blow some oil out. So I built this canister separator, and it's just a very simple design. I, I took uh, two steel cans that I recycled. These are actually old seafoam cans, and um, I used the bottom half of the can on each side, and I just cut them down and joined them with a spice plate in the middle. There are stainless steel pot scrubbers packing the inside to provide surface area to condense the oil mist on. And then I took uh, two half inch brass barb fittings and I uh, just drilled a hole in the end and uh, stick the brass barb fitting. It's a threaded fitting, but with this thin piece of the bottom of the can, uh, you're really not going to thread it in securely. So I use this metalized epoxy putty and I just, um, you know, knead some up with my fingers and then uh, fare this in, make sure you scuff up the bottom of the can. And that does a great job of holding it. I mean, it really sticks to everything real well. And that captures and stabilizes and seals the hose barb. And then I just run a piece of tubing. And then on the outside, you can see the inside is low and the outlet is high. So the mist will come in, it will condense inside the can, and then just gravity flow down along the bottom of the can and drain right back into the breather. So the breather will have mist coming on the top of the top of the tube and a trickle of recondensed oil on the bottom of the tube. And then of course any of the, the rest of the fumes and, and stuff will continue on down and out the bottom of the cowling. So I've only got a couple of flights, but already it seems to be working pretty well. Um, normally I would have a definite telltale oily kind of slime on coming out the, out the vent. Um, and, and now I just had just the slightest hint of a of oil. So I think that's working out just fine. This cable here is uh, for my battery tender and this just goes and connects back in through the battery here. Um, and I position this by the fill port where I can reach up and grab it. And then in the winter time I can, I can throw my battery charger on here and use it as a maintainer. Or if I need to charge it I can get to it without pulling the cowling. And the rest of the time I just tuck it out of the way up here. This piece, uh, looking at the front here, um, I use this uh, this blast tube. I just pick it up right in the standard pre-cut spot and then just direct it back and blow cooling air onto the, uh, the mag back here. Looking at the baffle itself, one thing I did on the standard Sonics baffle was I cut this right here and uh, created a separate door on top here. So join this with a hinge and then hinges up here that uh, that can be removed. So it makes it very simple to get to the plug. So just reach in here, pull this pin out, 
and then the, this whole door can then drop down and I can get right to the plugs. So from here you can get in here and, and uh, adjust your plugs and, and do whatever you need to do. Um, the back side just sits against the standard flange. I didn't modify this at all. Um, and then just a hinge on the top and then when you're done it just folds right back up and the hinge will go in and secure it. The advantage to that is that the rest of the baffling remains in place. You don't have to break the silicone seal around the, uh, the inside. You don't have to remove the cap screws that hold the valve covers on. Everything else stays in place. Just this piece drops down to, to access your plugs. Uh, that works out real well. Uh, same thing on the other side over here. So the big thing on this side is the, uh, the smoke tank here. Um, I mount it between the, the structure. Um, it just barely fits, but if, you, if you're, you're careful in, in layout, it will fit. So you can see there's not a lot of room on the top side here. There's not a lot of room right here. So it, if you get it too far to the side, it won't fit. And then down here, there's just barely enough room on the bottom side. And then if, you, if the camera can see it, um, the back of the accessory spider sits very close again. So again, we're talking about less than a quarter inch of clearance. But if you position it properly, it will fit. So I've got the outlet going to the smoke pump on the bottom. I've got the fill port up on the top here, and I just run a piece of curved tubing and, and use this cap to be able to fill it. Sonics recommends putting the cap in the filler box, and that way you can fill um, through your fuel door. That's a pretty good idea. Uh, I, I had a hard time getting enough room in there. I've got the floor plate in here, and so trying to get enough room on the side, I, I kind of struggled with that, so I decided I'll just, I'll just put it here, and uh, if I find that I'm filling my smoke tank so often that it's a problem, I'll cut a hole right here and just put another door in for my smoke oil. Uh, I don't anticipate that's going to be an issue, but um, that's kind of the plan. So down here, um, let me start with the fuel system. So what you can see down here is my drain valve. And this is my, my lowest point in the fuel system. I've got a regular Curtis drain valve. I just bent up a, a bracket and used some cushion clamps to, to hold it. And I've got a hole in the bottom of the cowling where I can get with my sample cup and, and uh, draw a sample. I use uh, high quality stainless steel line and fittings. And um, I'm just running this up to a T fitting on the, uh, on the firewall. Okay, so the fuel, I talked about the uh, the sump drain valve here and this line going up, there's a T on the firewall. I don't know how well this will show up, but right here comes through. And then uh, the straight through leg of the T goes to a billet fuel filter. And the side piece of the T goes to the drain valve. So anything that, any sediment, uh, this is the low point when it's just parked here. So it accumulates in this T and then just sort of runs down the filter line and stacks up in this leg right here, right on the drain valve. So the minute you hit the sump, it flushes that stuff out. Anything in the filter flushes out into that drain line. So anything that accumulates there after it settles will run right down into the sump line and, uh, and blow out the sump. And then at annual time, you just pull off the billet fuel filter and, and open it up and clean it. And then this line just loops right back around into the aerocarb. So it's not insulated. There's no gas collator. Um, I have not had any heat problems yet, but I'll be watching for it just to make sure that I don't have any issues. Um, it can be insulated beyond just the stainless steel you know, sheath uh, without much of a problem. But it's a nice gradual transition um, aside from the drain, which is not actually flowing any fuel while in flight, it's a nice smooth transition all the way through. Uh, you know, and, uh, there's no high point to accumulate vapor bubbles. It's nice and smooth all the way into the carb. And it's working out real nice. So the last thing I'm going to point out is uh, the smoke injector. This is uh, right out of the plans uh, that Sonics provides with the smoke kit. So the solenoid valve has a T-fitting and stainless steel tubing into this bung and it just injects it right into this section of, of uh, exhaust. And that seems to be working pretty good. In flight, uh, I'm still kind of playing with it. Uh, puts out a lot of smoke, but it seems to dissipate quickly. So I'm gonna have to maybe play with it a little bit more. 
but uh, pretty straightforward to execute. Just got to work on uh, getting my air show quality smoke. So that's it on the firewall forward. Um, while I'm here, I'll just uh, just point out my gear leg fairings. So the standard Sonix gear leg fairing, it's just a rectangular piece that, that sits in here, just purely for aesthetics and for no other reason. Um, I just like a tapered gear leg, so skinny at the bottom, and I just taper it uh, about two inches between top and bottom. So this is uh, um, two or three inches wider than the standard one. Um, and then it's a little fatter up here, so I just use some pipe insulation just around the gear leg just to take up the extra room. Down here at the bottom, I'll have a uh, intersection fairing that I molded up out of fiberglass. And uh, that closes the gap and retains this so it can't rock. It's just captured at the bottom and the top. And then my wheel pant here, which uh, is pretty dirty from doing maintenance, so i got to clean that up. And uh, I retain it with a bolt on the outside and a standoff, and then four bolts into the uh, the mounting plate on the inside. Here's a look at the other side. You can see how it's split on the back side, uh, so that the uh, the intersection fairing can be slipped over the gear leg. So and that's working pretty good. So anyway, I hope that answers some questions about how I chose to do things. Maybe gives you some ideas on your project. Thanks.